Good morning. Happy Thursday. Today we want to talk a bit about a pernicious temptation in that while all temptations are fundamentally something that we desire, this one's a lot harder to parse out and to really identify because unlike some forms of temptation which are external, um, you know, drugs, pornography, theft, um, adultery, you know, those kinds of things, they're, they're an external activity. You know, here's something that you could do, uh, you know, that you shouldn't do for uh, reasons. Uh, this temptation, on the other hand, is it's all in your head. It's all in how you look at the world and the way that you set yourself up for expectations uh, or you set, you set up your expectations for success or failure. And, and part of what's pernicious about it is that we can so easily cloud our perceptions with data and information that we can't keep track of it. Um, you know, an example of that, an idiom for that would be like uh, losing sight of the forest for the trees. You know, if you're standing right in front of a tree, you're not going to see the rest of the forest, uh, especially if you're literally, you know, face to face, you know, nose to uh, trunk uh, with that tree. You can't see everything. Uh, but if you step back, if you take a look at things from uh, a bit of a distance, uh, all of a sudden you're not stuck with such a narrow view. You can see more and you can see more of the forest uh, in addition to the trees. Um, the nature of this temptation uh, is based on thinking that we can change the game that's being played, that we can change the fundamental rules that we live by uh, through adding layers of complication or removing layers of complication from our lives. Uh, to give a specific example uh, with respect to food, uh, I need food in order to live and so does the rest of my family, uh, my wife and kids and all that kind of stuff, and our pets. Uh, we need food. so. The most fundamental relationship there, you know, point A to point B is I need food, point A, uh, point B, I have obtained food. Uh, a need and a satisfaction of that need. Uh, that doesn't change when I get a job, uh, when I live in a city, when I go traveling to another country or another state or, or whatever. That fundamental relationship remains constant. The difference is, again, the, the distance between point A and point B. So right now, for example, um, I don't know how to hunt, never learned how to do that, and I don't have a garden. So I have a longer distance between point A and point B than other folks who do have gardens or do hunt and all that kind of stuff. Uh, instead of directly harvesting food, uh, what I instead do is I work for a company, and then that company gives me a, a measure of value in the form of currency, and then I take that currency and exchange it for food at uh, another company whose job it is to manage the procurement and uh, distribution of food. So I'm, I'm still doing something to get from point A to point B, but there are more steps involved. And the deception is that by either adding to those steps or removing from those steps, I've fundamentally changed the nature of things. Um, I see this a lot because people will look at what's going on right now, the drama of politics, of economics, of social circumstances, and there will be a, a pining for another time. Uh, either, in some cases, people looking to the past, thinking that, you know, oh, you know, there was a point in the past where you know, the, the nature of these relationships was uh, more productive, uh, was healthier, or, or what have you. And so if we just go back to that, if we just remove some of these layers of complication, um, you know, then we'll, then we'll be okay. Then things will be better. Uh, or people go the other way. They say, well, in the future, you know, because of the politicians I have elected, because of the choices I have made, uh, the investments, you know, all that jazz, um, because of the things that I'm doing, the future is, is going to be better. Uh, and uh, because I have added more layers and those layers are going to be able to do things that, uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to do without those layers, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but what, again, this is, this is still playing with the details, the, the methods, like I was talking about yesterday. It's, it's playing with that, not the reason you need the method in the first place. It's not changing the fundamental dynamic that's driving your life. All you're changing is how you react to, how you perceive, how you play the game. You're still playing the same game, 
but because so many of the rules that we've got now are arbitrary, that we've, we've set them up for our convenience uh, and benefit, um, you know, adhering to them isn't mandatory. And a lot of times we see that unless natural consequences come into play, uh, a lot of times folks will just not make better choices. Uh, when the impact is to other people, for example, um, it doesn't seem to matter to some folks that they will hurt other people to get what they want. And the thing is, I mean, again, they're, they're still playing the same game. Everybody's Everybody needs food. Everybody needs to get food in order to stay alive. But some people are willing to play the game uh, to win at any cost. And until the natural consequences of their choice play out, uh, there's nothing that prohibits them or deters them from uh, pursuing that path. Likewise, <clears throat> you know, we have to realize that uh, whether the government is good or bad, uh, whether the whether the dynamics of that government are in our favor or not, uh, the government is just an, a new layer of complexity on top of existing human social dynamics. And so ultimately, we're deluding ourselves, we're distracting ourselves from the truth that if we add or remove layers, we're not changing point A and point B. We're changing the path from point A to point B, and it's got a finite range that it can even ever exist in. We can't ever get point A and point B so far apart and so complicated that they are actually no longer connected. But we can certainly get to the point where, you know, like the forest and the, with the trees, you know, no one person can actually understand how to trace between point A and point B. They get lost in it. They get lost in the, the connection between two different things, the dynamics that are driving stuff. And then they think, oh, well, you know, I'll be able to fix the problem if I just, you know, reduce the complexity, if I just go back to a simpler time. But again, all, all that's doing is that's moving back in the forest away from the tree. That's not changing how many trees there are. That's not changing the fundamental dynamic that's at play. All that's doing is trying to refocus the individual's perceptions so they can better understand the whole. And so that's where the temptation, the temptation is to think that, okay, well, I have to act in order to get that perception. And I have to change things in order to get that perception. I need to go cut down trees. I need to go plant trees. I need to go and do something first in order to sh get things to where I think they're supposed to be. And then, and then I'll take an account. Then I'll look around and see what things are going on. The temptation is to think that we can understand all the connections between point A and point B, and that on the way to understanding the system, we're going to fix it at the same time. At my workplace, we run in, I run into this problem a lot where uh, we have a process document that says, uh, under certain circumstances, you do X, Y, and Z. And what will end up happening is that people don't do X, Y, and Z, but they'll have a bajillion ideas on how X, Y, and Z could be improved and made better. And so they're just going to go do that, you know, first. They're going to go and, and fix the system that they don't actually comply with or understand or adhere to. And, and then it's going to be better. You know, oh, it's going to be so much, you know, this is going to be so much more efficient. Oh, it's going to be so much easier to do all these things, you know, all this, that, and the other. And what they don't realize, again, is that they haven't changed the connection between point A and point B. All they've changed is where that path is drawn on the paper. You know, all they've changed is, you know, how many uh, unnecessary turns, how many uh, abstract complications, you know, how many things are being done to distract from the fact you're just going from point A to point B. You know, all, all that is changing is that, you know, we still have to do X, Y, and Z. The specific manner isn't what's fundamentally important. Um, another example would be if I have to go to a store, like I say, I take my measure of value and I need to go to the store. Well, I can walk, I can take a car, I could uh, ride a bike. You know, there are lots of different ways to achieve the same thing. But if I'm at point A at my home and the store is point B, it doesn't matter how many different ways there are to go from point A to point B. I still fundamentally have to go to, from point A to point B. You know, even if I'm getting a hold of an Uber and I say, well, you know, I didn't have to drive. You know, I, I, I just, you know, pushed a button on my phone. Uh, someone came and took me from point A to point B. It still doesn't change that I had to go from point A to point B. 
I still had to do those things in order to satisfy the, the fundamental relationship of what was going on between myself and uh, point A and point B. The fundamental relationship never changes. It's always in the details. It's always in um, the iterations of uh, the specific details of a circumstance. Um, an example of that would be that uh, if you go to a forest, again, uh, and you compare two trees, you know, it's like, well, these are completely different. It's like, well, no, they're, they're the same species of tree, you know, but they didn't grow in an identical fashion. So they are individual, but they are not unique at the same time. So it's, it's that kind of a, a mentality where, you know, all of a sudden people think, oh, well, I found another tree. You know, this is a completely different tree. It's not like the last one. Instead of, you know, getting 10 feet off the ground until you have a, a branch uh, show up, you know, this one's six feet off the ground. Whoa, you know, totally different. So, well, it's, it's still a tree. It's still a branch, and, and all you're doing is using the distance from the ground to the first branch to act as if this is something fundamentally new, fundamentally different, fundamentally distinct. The temptation is to think that we could change the relationships between point A and point B by adding or removing layers. The temptation is to think that if the relationship, the, the means, the, the distance between point A and point B were different, if the need for that relationship were different somehow, then then we've disconnected point A and point B. Like we, we don't need that same problem any longer. But everything that we see, all the stuff that we have, the complications with politics, with economics and all that kind of stuff, all of it was created in between an existing point A and point B. If you reset back to the defaults of human civilization, the things that we have problems with now would still exist. They would just be a lot simpler in nature. There would not, there would not be all of the, the twists and turns, the confusion, the, the extra you know lines drawn um, to try and confuse or distract or, or to make it seem like uh, things are more advanced. But it's just back to a, something more, more simple. We're not going to escape the problems that we have by making the, the distance between A and B shorter when the fundamental problem is A and B are connected at all. You know, people need things. People need food, water, shelter. And we can add all sorts of layers of complexity to that. But, you know, we didn't invent a new A and B. We didn't have a, a C and a D with advanced civilization. We didn't create new points to connect. All we did was complicate the connections between the existing points and then continue to complicate it and then complicate it and then complicate it. Everything that we struggle with today, we've struggled with as a species since the beginning. Everything. It's been more complicated and it's more abstract. You know, again, because of how big the forest is, you can lose track of it based on looking at a specific tree. But the fundamental relationship has never changed. The fundamental dynamic is the same as always. Resetting to default isn't going to fix the problems that we've got. It'll just make them easier to perceive and understand. And perhaps that's enough. Perhaps that's really what people want. Perhaps that's really the goal, is, is not to actually fix any problems, but just shrink them to a size where we can manage them more easily. But that's not how people talk. People don't talk about escaping the world as if, they're just going to retain the same problems and then make them simpler. People think that they can resolve the problems completely by either adding or removing to the complexity of what we've already got. They think that they can go from an A and a B to a C and a D, to a, an E and an F. That's not what's at play. That's not the choice that we make. And when you understand that, when you grasp that, and I, this is the thing, this is really abstract stuff, very wordy, but when you understand that you're not changing the problems you face, all you're changing is how big they are. All of a sudden, even the big ones don't look so big anymore. All of a sudden, even the big ones don't have this ominous nature about them any longer. Not because they're necessarily any more easier to solve, because you understand them better, but just that they're not nearly so foreboding. They're not nearly so scary. And when you're not living in fear, when you're not living in ignorance, when you understand what's really happening, then you can have good conversations. 
But if you're still falling prey to the temptation, thinking that you can change the connection between A and B by perhaps let me let me let me drive five miles the wrong way and then go to the store, like I, I'm not changing anything. I'm not really changing anything. If that's the delusion that we're still under, if that's the conversations that we're having, we're not going to fix anything. We're not going to solve anything. And we're certainly not going to be able to grapple with any of the problems that we've got. But if we do understand that the problems are going to persist, the problems are going to remain, but how we address them, how we understand them, how we cope with them, and how we live with them changes, well, then we're going to be okay even when things are not. Then we're going to be accepting reality instead of trying to bend it to our will. Then we're going to be able to understand that others are just doing the same thing. That instead of them interfering with us trying to play God, that they're just trying to go from point A to point B as well. And there's nothing fundamentally wrong with that. There's nothing fundamentally evil about other people just trying to survive. And if we can make better choices, and we understand why we need to make better choices, well then we're in a position where we might actually be able to help those folks to make better choices themselves. We might be able to help them step back from the tree, to accept reality instead of trying to change it, to spend more time understanding what is instead of fantasizing about what can never be. That's how we can move forward. Not by investing our hopes and dreams in some sort of reset, by thinking that we're going to fix everything by simplifying it down to a, a smaller level. All we do is change how we interact with those problems, not whether they exist. All we change is the nature of how we struggle, not the fact that we're going to struggle. And when we accept that, we can thrive. We don't just struggle anymore, but we can learn how to do better. And we can learn how to teach others to do the same. And we can figure out how to survive despite these problems persisting. How to do well despite these problems persisting. Because instead of ignoring them, pretending they're not there, we're learning about them. We're understanding them. And we're, we're humbled by them. As always, when seeking that path of humility, pray, read the scriptures, learn and understand things, explore this world that has been created to our benefit. Understand that the problems we face are never going to go away. All that's changing is the scope the size of them, and our ability to wrap our minds around them. The problems will remain, and so will Jesus Christ and his desire to be in our lives. Because the problems that we face are all really small in comparison to the one that he did. His goal, his job, his purpose was to reconcile man and God. That's a, an infinitely large gap between imperfect beings and a perfect being. But instead of lamenting, instead of complaining, Jesus instead embraced the path before him. In the garden, he cried out to God, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Because there was no other way. And Christ went to the cross. And through it, he sacrificed. A perfect man sacrificed for the sins of many. And now he sits exalted. Instead of just surviving, he <laughs> thrives in a way which no mortal being, no mere person, can themselves achieve. So that's why we place our faith in Christ. That's why we don't put our hope in fixing problems or thinking that we're going to change the name of the game, that we're going to break the power of sin over ourselves. 
that we're going to stop needing food, shelter, comfort. Instead, we accept what is. We learn about how those relationships are created, how those relationships are sustained, and we do the best that we can within what we are capable of doing. And for everything else, where we fall short, we cry out to God. Take that time, step back from the trees, don't fall prey to the temptation that this will all just go away if we just did this, if we just did that, if we just added this, if we just removed that. The problem is going to be there. But again, so is Christ and the power that he offers us, the peace that surpasses all understanding because our identity, our purpose, our, our life is not wrapped up in counting the trees, finding the unique ones. It's not in this. It's not in the forest. It's in our relationship with God. And the rest of the stuff is just a distraction. The rest of the stuff just doesn't matter in comparison. Don't fall prey to the temptation. And if you do, reach out to those who haven't. We all have strengths and weaknesses. We all have some temptations that we fall prey to more than others. And that's where between us through fellowship and our prayer and reading of the Bible, our relationship with God, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And in time, we'll be even more than okay. But for now, that's all we've got. And that's, that's enough.